Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Shadowgate. So, when we last left off, we have a big troll up here who's... Uh, we have to respawn here. Uh, there we go. Alright, Bridges is. Cost is a gold coin. We don't have a gold coin. So, we're gonna have to fight this guy. He is a monster, after all. But... I don't think the stone is gonna do much against him. I mean, look at the size of this guy. We're gonna throw something way bigger. We don't wanna throw our sword. Um... We have a spear. And a hammer. Hammers, they're normally throwable weapons unless you are actually Thor. So, let's throw a spear. Spear and javelins are usually thrown weapons. The troll falls silently into the dark cavern. You listen, but you do not hear him crash. Well, that's an omen if ever I heard one. But it'll let by, so... The moon casts a brilliant shadow on the grounds of the corner. So yeah, let's, uh, let's save here. Um, let's look at this guy. The Cyclops stands before you, ready for battle. It's a finely crafted well, made of stone and board. Um, can we use the crank? The crank turns rather easily. At the end of the rope, there's a small bucket. The small bucket is used to fetch water from the depths. To hold everything, we need a torch. Now, this is technically a container, so let's quote-unquote open it. Uh, in order to be able to see inside of it. And we have a gauntlet. The gauntlet of silver plate bears the symbol of the Circle of the Twelve. That seems important. Let's, uh, let's take that. And now, for safety's sake, let's, yeah, let's, let's close, close, close the bucket. That way we don't have that open in the background. Anyway. Can we hit the... A battle cry dies in your throat as the Cyclops crushes your skull with his club. Oh. Okay, let me. Foreshadowing. So, what if we rode the bucket down? Can we do that? Let's try that. Nothing yet. Can't do that. Can I jump that? With a mighty leap, you jump headfirst into the well. On the way down, you see no water below. The well was deeper than you imagined. You have just broken every bone in your body. That's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Alright. So, we need a real weapon for this guy. Let's actually get our sword out, and... Yeah, it's the same action. It's... If you try fighting him with melee weapons, he just kills you. So... Let's not fight him with melee. Let's fight him with range. Now we can use the sling. As, as soon as you start twirling the sling, a magical influence takes over your body. You cry out, DEATH TO THE PHILISTINE! And release the stone. Bullseye! You know, I've always wondered what these were, but that's, that one thing is a club, which is or supposedly a club, which looks more like a scythe to me, and his shield, I think. You can almost see the stars revolving around the Cyclops' head. He is down, but not out. So, you can leave now, but if you come back, uh, when you come back through here, he will be up again. And you will have to take him out using another stone. 
And you see the problem here, right? You don't have the five stones, and if you're trying to backtrack to find stuff, you'll need more than that. So, let's finish this. You drive the sword deep into the Cyclops. Blood pours out, over the, out of the wound and onto the grass. It's a dead Cyclops. What did you expect after stabbing him with your sword? <laughs> also, because we died, I do need to get that, uh... I need to open the bucket again. I know that seems like a funny phrase, but it's literally the game's way of saying that you're looking inside of something. It's just not worded well. Let me close the bucket. There. Okay. Feel better now. Otherwise, then every time you go through this room, it has that the bucket card open, and it's a pain. Also, make sure not to tap the A button too fast, or you'll light another torch and waste torches. Don't waste torches. Anyway, with a gauntlet in the hand, let's open the door in the distance. And you can hit B to deselect so you can automatically move. Um, here we are. A long, drafty hallway with one flight of stairs and several open passages. Well, it's a rub. The first thing we're going to do is burn it. Death to rubs. I feel better. Alright, so let's take that torch on the wall. And there's really nothing else here, so let's just go through the doors in order, shall we? You stand in a small library. It seems to be the skull of some unfortunate individual. This fine map of the lands of Tarkus is quite detailed, although incomplete. It's a small hole in the wall some three inches deep. I don't think each individual book has a title. I'm gonna try that. Bookcase Plenty is full of books. Okay. Full of books. You don't have time to reach, read every one of them. Think of your quest. Spot the book title is Gods. You open the book and read it. And when these days appear, the people will call upon their gods and there will be no answer. Nay, only he who carries the sword shall truly be given the scales to judge them. This book's title is The History of the War. When the Warlock Order finally gained power, he went up against the Great Kings. The Evil One would have succeeded if not for the Circle of the Twelve. If he ever returns to power, Tarkus will not live to see the rise of the sun. Now, which of these two was gods? Was it this one? Nope, this is the Circle of the Twelve. The Circle of the Twelve was formed by before most things began to be. Their names are Framos, Garland, Teleton. Rodmer, Talamar, Magnus, Wontov, Butwick, Timbak, Sharnir, Lakmir, and Turgar. The circle was broken when Talamar took the new name, the Warlock Lord. So Talamar was one of the Circle of Twelve, and betrayed the Circle of Twelve, becoming the Warlock Lord to, I guess, take over the world. This complete. This is a complete uh, twelve-volume set of the Encyclopedia Dru Druidica. Hmm, interesting. And the top shelf is all one. It's like the top shelf is all one hot, hot box or hot spot. Then the middle shelf has three individual hot spots, and the bottom shelf is all one hot spot. And all of this is one hot spot. Let's see. So that's interesting. And we have another book here. The book is quite old. The words of the prophecy is written upon it. Well, if it's a prophecy, and we're the ones that are supposed to be prophesied about, we probably need to open and read this. You can't read the strange writing in the book. Well, darn. Well, this desk looks like it has a drawer in it. A strong one dressed fit for a king. There's a couple of drawers in it. Okay, so there's a couple of drawers. We open drawer. Or just open desk in general. That's probably a thing for all drawers. So there's four items in the midst of however many drawers there are. We have glasses. Glasses are worn. They've probably been used for a long time. They're probably reading glasses. Where should you take them? Now, there is a funny glitch. I don't know why, but I'll show it in a second. 
Uh, or maybe I should save before I show it because it does mess things up a little bit. It doesn't mess things up irrevocably. Words. I am so bad at the English language. It doesn't make it where you can't progress. But it does start screwing with things. If you take the glasses again. And again. And again. Note that this doesn't work as far as I'm aware of any other item. It only works with the glasses for whatever reason. I, there appears to not be a flag. See, you seem to waste your time. Seem to waste your time. Um, there's a flag that's not being flagged. And we can just... The glasses are in hand. And we can have just your pages of glasses. I'm pretty sure this overflows at some point, so I'm going to stop. What's even more fun, what's more fun than carrying like 30 pairs of glasses? Oh, just wait, I'm gonna light a torch, because you're gonna see. I mean, you can already imagine where this is going, I'm sure. Because you can wear the glasses. You try the glasses, and they fit perfectly. Hmm, you can see very well. But you can wear 30 pairs of glasses. This is why it doesn't break the game completely, because you can easily get them out of your inventory. But why can they duplicate themselves? It makes no sense. For whatever reason, probably because the way that you're supposed to grab them and immediately wear them, which then pulls them back out of your inventory, uh, probably a flag that's not set in the game for glasses. I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a coder. But multiple pairs of glasses don't do anything for you. It's... All we're doing is we're adjusting a value from 0 to 1, you know, false to true. And we're constantly going from true to true, technically, because we're, we're not implementing it. We're not... As far as I'm aware, it's not a plus one modifier. I think it's just modifier becomes one. Because otherwise, it would be... Well, let's see. Because what the glasses do is let you read the book. Wow, with these glasses, all of them, you can understand and read what you could not before. The light grows faint, the path winds round. Where life is lost, wisdom is found. The seed of the dream, for the evil is free. Where the sword is hung, you must place the key. A bridge to from, amidst burning death, a demon to guard. Notari Ryzen. You've learned one magic spell. As the spell was chanted, the book quickly vanished. There is a big hint in that book, and it sucks that it teaches you Matari Rises, because then you can't go back and read the hint. But remember that where the sword is hung, you must place the key. We already know what the key is, and now we know that the key must be placed in the sword. Apparently. Whatever that means. And we're gonna just wear more glasses. Mostly because I want them back out of my inventory. Again, I'm about 85-90% positive this doesn't do anything. If it ends up breaking the game though, it'll be even better. I actually would not be mad if it breaks the game. Anyway, we've worn all the glasses. We don't have to worry about, you know, seeing ever again. <laughs> you know, those those, those, those things about having, like, the 30 pairs of shades hanging off their face? Yes, that's what J Lord Jair looks like right now. I don't know why I'm hung up on the level number 30. Anyway. <clears throat> we have a gem slot in the back. Of course, the only gem we have left. The bookcase slowly slides away, revealing a hidden passage. And that's why that bookcase, in particular, does not check for anything. It's because it's a door. Of course. 
This room is dominated by a large fireplace set in the brick, red brick wall. Okay. Oh, you know, something we forgot to do. The, we got key number five, which we're missing key four, that's a little weird. Um, but we also got two more scrolls. Scroll three is open. Your hands begin to sweat. Lands under the heavens, key to the world. Terra Tarak. So we learned Tarak. And scroll four. To move the sun from far to near, light is what the darkness fears. Instantum Illumina. And again, we've learned another spell. Now, it's a flash of light. It's not going to replace the torches, sadly. It'd be nice if it was a light spell, but no. It's what the darkness fears. Remember, the wording of the spell is very important in these kind of games. So, something is afraid of the, of the light, and that's what that spell is designed to combat. Out of the wooden bellows is stuck many a floundering fire. Peter Goblet, which glows with a lustrous slime. So, uh, shine. Uh, it is a glow that mounts on a stand for display. It shows all the known lands. Looking closely, you can see a seam upon the eighth equator. Huh, it's a seam, huh? Can we hit it? Nothing happened. Uh, can we open it? It won't open. Well, we have what we need to deal with the globe. Yes. We just got what we need to deal with the globe. This one is dumb, but it is the key to the world. Tarak, or Tarak. A large crack appears around the equator of the globe. It, I thought I hit open, I did not hit open. Now we can open the globe. And within the globe is key six, and bottle five. Uh, I don't remember bottle five actually. What's bottle five? A small black bottle with a cork on top. Huh? I remember key six. I don't remember bottle five. Oh, just out of manners. Let's close the globe. Oh, and just for fun, you can leap out the window and kill yourself, by the way. I may show that off in another room. Anyway. Let's come in here. It smells like a kennel in here, and there are no windows through which to circulate fresh air. Oh, there is so much here. So. We seem to be wasting our time. <laughs> it's an empty test tube in a wooden rack. Uh, there's another bottle that is impossible to light. I know my torch is running low, that's not good. Silver vial, does not go into any details. Extremely slimy, you know. And another impossibly light one. Ah, oh, there's a strange poisonous looking liquid in the pot. It really stinks. The steel mesh cage rattles constantly. A simple latch secures it. And you might look here. The lab animals can be chained to the stone while performing experiments on them. Well, let's let poor whatever it is out. You move the latch and the mutated dog pounces on you. Oh boy. It looks like the doctor put something strange in the dog's water. Before you can do anything else, the mutation quickly rips you apart. So much for being nice to things, yeesh. So, yes. So, yeah, we don't have to do anything with that fence, with that cage, we just have to leave. You stand in the small garden. Only sound is the falling water in the night. Now, this is a pretty zip. The exquisite marble fountain is in the shape, it is shaped as the image of a sea serpent. From its mouth, it spews an acidic liquid. Huh. 
small wooden flute. It looks like it can make wonderful music. Huh, let's take it. In fact, let's do something really stupid. This is gonna be one of my favorites. My actual, like, it's hard to pick my actual favorite. Kneeling down next to the fountain, you drink a handful of the acidic water. You can't even scream because you no longer have a throat, let alone the larynx. I love that one. It is super detailed for no reason. Like, I mean, it's not as detailed as it could be, but it's really detailed. Well, let's try taking the flute. As you reach for the flute, you touch the water, and pain explodes through you. The water is extremely acidic and obviously not good for drinking. I know this kind of looks like a close-up of a uh, like on a birdbath style fountain, but I think this is actually a full-size fountain with an enormous flute on top of it. I think that's what they're actually going for. Anyway, we need something to protect our hand. Which we have. Place the gauntlet on your hand. It feels like it was made just for you. If you have the gauntlet on hand, then you can take this. By using the silver gauntlet, you remove the flute easily. Now, specifically, well, why the silver gauntlet? Why does that work? Well, it's kind of a hint hinted at back in the, the, the coffin room. I don't know if silver's supposed to block acidicness. I'm actually no good when it comes to understanding the pH values and uh, of metals and such, but the silver coffin keeps in and holds, contains, the acidic slime. So the silver gauntlet can protect you from the acidic liquid. Now, if silver has any protective features or able to neutralize acid, I have no honest idea. I probably could look that up sometime. But... Yeah, there's a little bit of a correlation there. It makes a little more sense than you would think. And this message, the sound of water splashing is music to your ears, is a very, very subtle hint as well. Because it's music to your ears, you should make music. Hey, wait a minute. That was very familiar. Anyone who's played Deja Vu would recognize that theme. Yes, the sound of the flute is very pretty indeed. It seems like you wake from a dream, only to find a hole in the tree. Is it real? The flute's music is like magic. The ring is in hand, so we now have the ring. Now, we're not done here. There is one thing we can do something with besides all those bottles in the background, man. The green thing we can... Technically, you can drink from it. Uh, does not kill you, but I will show you what it does. Slurp. You taste the poisonous-looking liquid in the pot. You notice small blue hairs begin to grow on the palms of your hands. The viscous liquid seems to contain body-altering ingredients. Ugh. Anyway, let's see if we can lash that dog to this, shall we? The stone rises slowly out of the floor. A shining vial is inside it. I'll get to you in a minute. The glass vial is filled with a clear liquid. The sign of the cross is on it. So, this is something holy. Not open. I'm gonna take it. The water is in hand. The stone descends back into the place. Alright, yes, torch music. I hear you, I understand. We're running low on torches, I'm just trying to conserve a few. Anyway. I knew we were going to see this message eventually. You have to open the door before you go through it. If you don't have move selected, the game auto opens the door. But if you have move selected, Jer just face plants into it. You are awed by the majestic beauty of this immense banquet. 
the first thing I am on awe of is the fact that this carpet, this rug, is not burnt. The rug quickly catches fire and burns away. The key can be seen underneath. Yeah, as the room's loading in, you actually see the burnt away part uh, before the rug then solidifies. It kind of does do that throughout most of the game, even, where doors will be open for a moment and then immediately shut as the game fully loads in your position. It's kind of funny. It happened in the original, so it's not an emulation or anything. It, it did happen in the actual NES. It's how the, the game is uh, rendering the rooms. Anyway, we have key number four, so that's why we didn't find cool four in the previous rooms. You're actually expected to come up here and find key four before you find key five and six in those rooms. Uh, I believe, anyway. So we have three rooms, and they're all locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. Can I take that mirror? The mirror is in hand. I can take that mirror. I was thinking a mirror would come in handy. I actually have no idea if the mirror comes in handy. I don't remember. We're starting to get to the point where my memory is a little fuzzy with the game, but we shall press on. So key four opens up one of the three. So is it the bottom one? It is the bottom one. Okay. I know for a fact I don't want to go through Key 4's door right now. Trying to save ourselves a little bit of time. So Key 5. Is Key 5 the next door in line? Oh, it is! That means Key 6 should be the last door. And by that I mean it's uh, bottom floor, since we're already on the bottom floor, the next one up, the first door up the stairs, and then the second door up the stairs. And I think, hilariously, uh, we want to go to the second door first. Now, it appears to be a sphinx. It looks at you indifferently. Those torches we can't take. They are the sphinx's torches. Strange, eerie flame burns silently. And what are these? It's a stairway leading upward. There seem to be some strange marks scratched into its side. Huh, strange. Three up. Two up, one down, one up, two down, then alternating up and down. Strange indeed. Well, let's go up the stairs, shall we? Let's, let's, this guy, is, is he peaceful? He's thrown upon a sphinx. It has the body of a lion and the head of a man. It doesn't appear to be aggressive, he's just sitting there, so let's just pass him. As you move, the sphinx spoke. Who are you? No pass without my permission. To pass, you must answer a riddle. It has towns but no houses, forests but no trees, rivers but no fish. But dost thou know? Bring me the answer to my riddle, and I shall let thee pass. Okay, that was not bad. This riddle, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, is random. I don't know if there's a way of, of manipulating RNG or anything to get the one you want, but the thing, of course, that we need, and this is a very classic riddle. This, not open, I want to take it. This is a map. It has towns, but no people. Uh, I think the original one is uh, forest, but no trees, uh, cities, but no buildings, or something like that, Road, roads, but no cars. It's, it's a pretty obvious one when you stop and think about it. Uh, and this is probably the simplest of the riddles that you can give us. You use the map on it, you have correctly answered my riddle for you. Thou may now pass. Now notice it didn't take it away from us. It's because he can ask us a riddle again, but not until after we've left, completely left his area, and come back to him. Fortunately, if we do this right, we don't have to ever come back here again. A telescope is beside the window. A star map is on the wall. This must be an observatory. Well, there's a scroll on the table. I was going to look at it, but you know what? Let's actually open it. Scroll 5 is open. You read the scroll. Observing the stars, the throne constellation appears once every five summers. 
Legend says it is a portal to another world. I don't think that's important. Um, well, let's look at the telescope. As you peer through the telescope, you were amazed by the clarity of the night sky. Okay. It's a map of the known galaxy. You can see billions and billions of stars. An intricate carving of a shooting star hangs on this map. The map seems to only loosely, or to be only loosely attached to the wall. Well, let's take that intricate carving, the stars, and the and since it did say uh, that it's only loosely attached to the wall, see if we can open it. Because it's containing something. What is this? The rod. This rod is made of cast iron. Okay, so it's iron. Okay. Oh my! You are so captivated by the woman's beauty but you momentarily forget her predicament. Yes, in the moonlight, she's even more beautiful. Hmm. Okay then, well first, let's uh, see her predicament here. This silver chain seems to be strongly secured to the wall. You know, silver. Is she a cynic? <laughs> but no, that's that's... Silver seems to be a thing here. Through the portal, you can see the moon hovering over the darkened mountains. Okay, then. This fine lass lies upon the floor, chained to the wall. She's extremely beautiful. Uh, why hasn't she said anything to us? Can we talk to her? It doesn't seem to understand what you say. That doesn't bode well. And if we look beside her, it's some sort of spike that's made of precious metals. Ouch! tips are sharp as needles. Well, as you may suggest, may have gathered by the hints, uh, everything is not as it seems. So, if we take this, with a loud roar, the wolf pounces on you, taking your life. The wolf's powerful jaws rip your throat out. Yeah. She's a werewolf. And honestly, the hints are there. There's a big thing about the moonlight. Uh, and looking at her ch her chains, seeing that they're made of silver. Uh, I like the game for its subtle hints. It's not obvious until death has already taken you. You know, the whole... I'm wondering if that's the case, that it's like where, where, where life is lost, wisdom is found. I'm actually wondering if that is what that means, is that when you die, you learn something about the situation. But if you're careful enough and pay close enough attention, you don't necessarily have to die for most of the puzzles. Most, keyword. We'll get to a few that are stupid, including a couple that we've already passed. But, so we have this arrow that is made of silver. Your aim is true as you plunge the silver arrow into the beautiful woman. The beautiful lady suddenly transforms into a wolf. This looks like your typical dead werewolf. Your arrow is deeply lodged in its body. The blade is in hand. We now have the blade. Some sort of spike. Okay, so this is spike. It's made of precious metals. Interesting. Well, let me show a little fun little thing. The small plain room is lit only by the light of the moon itself. So, for whatever reason, well, we can try using, let's try using the sword. Uh, let's finish it off. The silver didn't do the job. Let's cut its head off or something. Nothing happened. But if we use the torch, you put the burning torch close to it. With a loud roar, the wolf pounces on you, even though it's technically dead. I don't think anyone's 100% sure why that tor the torch revives the wolf. I honestly feel it's an oversight where you're supposed to put the torch close to the woman and then she pounces you for attacking her with the torch. 
but uh, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna leave the Sixers room. And we can go to this room, room six. Even although the evening air is cool, this small circular room radiates a fervent heat. What's this? The horn is forged a flawless platinum. Its beauty is unbelievable. The platinum horn, we need that. Flame burns within this brazier, lighting the entire room. Hilariously, I'm fairly certain you can still die of, of your torch burning out. The flame, yeah. Uh, through the portal, you can see the moon hovering over the darkened mountain, so it's still the same there. Well, let's take the horn. Or not. A large fireball suddenly appears in the room and causes you to shield your eyes. When you open them, you notice that the fire has changed to something far more menacing. The Hellhound makes this hot room even hotter. There must be a way to cool all the room off before you roast. Well, it's simple. It's a Hellhound. Now, it does have... Oh, let me go ahead and hit it, because if you hit it, it kills you. Let's be obvious. Here it is. <laughs> it actually did the pow sound. Oh my god. The demon dog snarls and pounces on you. Its teeth, its teeth seep deep into your flesh. Thank you, a dog. You actually revived my torch. That's a little funny. So yeah, we have the holy water. The holy water has sent the hellhound back to the place where it was spawned. The flame died out, and the room is quiet as though nothing had happened. Though these are still lit, so again, you could still die to fire or die to darkness even though there's light in the room. It happens. Anyway, we took the Platinum Horn, so we know we have at least one of the items, although the blade there is probably the, set of, uh, the first of the items. So let's come up here, though. Let's come up here. Hello! As you stand on the turret, an eerie blue dragon appears in the clear, starry sky. You can't take it. Why did I try taking it? I was trying to look at it. It's a Wyvern! <laughs> I had to do that. This beastie is a distant cousin of the dragon, but it's smaller and fiercer. This rather heavy talisman is made of gold and is extremely sharp around its edges. It shines with an incredible brilliance. Huh. Well, we know what's going to happen when we try to take this. With the speed of lightning, the wyvern wraps its tail around your neck. You die, screaming silently. But why did it strangle us with its tail? Anyway, something that is fast as lightning, let's well, let's channel our inner Final Fantasy and cast video on it. Video, meteor, comet, whatever. The star becomes a flash of light as you launch it. Crash! It strikes the wyvern and explodes it into and it explodes in a million pieces. So correct me if I'm wrong, but lightning is usually faster than cosmic energy, right? I mean I could be mistaken. And besides, it was a magical star that had nothing to do with actual uh, cosmic speeds or anything. And furthermore, why was a dragon of any kind weak to cosmic power? Is there something I'm missing? I don't think there's anything I'm missing. I'm thinking that is just one of the most dumb puzzles in the game. So that's two, I think, that we've passed that are just like, huh? The talisman is in a hand. Can we get a more detailed inscription, or is it... Okay, it's just the same as the inscription as before. Okie dokie. So, we're done here. Let's leave. 
finally, it's time to go down here. You venture a small corridor. Two arched pathways wait patiently for you. And look, there's more torches at last. Yes, we're starting to get some more torches back in. That was a huge dry spell with no real torches. Only a couple here and there. But, oh, it's nice to have some more torches. Now, if you're not spending time doing everything, this is about the time you hit double digit torches. That's how much time we wasted just looking at things. From this windy ledge, you can get an idea of the size and strength of the castle. Now, I may end up deciding to go back through this just as quickly as possible to show how many torches you can wind up with. Uh, because it's pretty funny how many torches you go through when you're playing this game semi-casually. The sky foretells the coming of a great storm. This appears to be a mount of some sort, perhaps for a flag pole. Well, yes, we'll get that on the way through. Ah, this screen. Lightning lights up near the countryside as you stand on the lookout point. It's a pot of gold. The leprechaun must have skipped. The leprechaun must have skipped town. Well, let's see how much is in there. Did you hear that at the end of that? It was a dew. As you move the pot, you realize you have fallen for the oldest trick in the book. You suddenly find yourself knee deep in the moat. It seems that the alligators really enjoy your company. Yeah. The pot of gold is nothing but death. It only exists to kill you. But bag three, on the other hand, has a big coin. We'll look at that in a second. Gold coin and gold coin. Why is the other torch so small already? Probably because we've been dying. It resets to a maximum, and thus I extended the life of the left torch without the right torch uh, being extended. I think that's what happened. So there's a lot of lightning here. And lightning, you draw with rods. In fact, this is the kind of mount you would have you would have on a tall building to draw lightning away from hitting the actual top of the building itself. Now the rod didn't look that big when it was behind the star now. Maybe it's perspective, maybe it's telescoping. I don't know. Suddenly the sky seems to be on fire as a bolt of pure lightning strikes the rod. You're startled to see a skeletal hand rise from a hole that is formed at your feet. It looks like a fork. It's a wand of sorts. Carved on the side of the wand is a small picture of a serpent. You realize I had the serpent's picture on it. That's pretty cool. As you take the wand from the skeletal hand, it begins to descend. The whole thing closes up as if it had never been. Okay, then. I hope I don't have to make use of the infinite torch thing I was talking about, but we are running dangerously low on torches. <laughs> I think I need to speed this up a bit. Um, anyway... Who's ready for a massive bit of backtracking? Because we, we kind of are. So, before you backtrack, one thing you want to do is make sure you've had the Humana spell. Now, you can get that if you didn't already. You can get it from the first area. You have to make sure you have it before you try to come back. Two, you want to make sure that you have at least one bottle number two. And you want to make sure that you have the wand we just picked up. Those are the most important things available at this point in time. Uh, the rest we will come to, you know, but that's that's the reason we have to go all the way back, basically. Is because of that wand. So let's backtrack. And let's backtrack. And again. 
Now, this is one of the reasons why you have to make sure you stab this guy, because when you come back through, I don't know if he stops you coming down this way, but if you haven't killed him, he'll be back up before you make it back. I'm going to save it before I leave, in case I forgot something. Alright, again, through the hot room, and now I need to remember where I'm going, I need to go down, and I should go back twice from here. So, let's take a moment to have some fun. I mentioned bottle number two. That's because that bottle number two is the small silver vial that glows with luster shine that is impossibly light. But what about bottle number one? Let's find out what's in bottle number one, shall we? As you consume the liquid in the vial, your body convulses and death spasms quickly follow. Yeah. Exists for no purpose but to die. Can I leave it? I just realized that perhaps leave was also usable instead of use for, like, your, uh, your gems and such. Where's bottle number one? I passed it. Like, twice. There you go. Can we just drop it here? You can't drop it here. Oh, well. Anyway. So let's use bottle two. Now, there are several of these in the game. It's designed where you can find out what the bottle does, get to the other side over here, and then realize you don't have the item, and still get the item and come back and still be okay. There are three bottles. But I don't think there's any more than that. Now, you only have to have one. You drink the liquid and immediately begin to rise in the air. So we are now light. Light enough that all we have to do is use the guide ropes to guide ourselves across the bridge. A giant snake confronts you in a small cave. Well, let's see how what our death faces us here. It's a giant snake. It doesn't move. Perhaps it's getting ready to strike? You wait for the dead creature to kill you, but it still has yet to move. Upon closer inspection, you laugh at your foolishness. It's only a statue. I like how Lord Jer, uh, Prince Jer, whatever his name is at this point in time in the game, and the, the, the storyline, I love how his first instinct is just to let it kill him. Well, giant snake, nothing I can do, better brace myself. Anyway, it's a snake statue. The wand had a picture of a snake on it. There's your hint. The snake begins to shake and shudder. Is it just your eyes, or is it shrinking? The serpentine statue begins to change. It grows smaller and smaller. It dematerializes and forms anew as a staff of tremendous beauty. Dramatic script winds its way around the staff. You can feel power emanating from it. Folks, I think we found the Staff of Ages. The Staff is at hand. So now we have a third of the five. Suddenly, you feel heavier than you did only a moment ago. Don't worry, this is just letting you know that you can't cross that bridge again. Wow, we're down to one torch. And we have to make our way back. Oh boy. No, let me through. Uh oh. The troll says you must pay a toll of one gold coin. Hey, buddy. The troll stares at you. Hi. Uh, no hard feelings, right? 
Look, look, I'll even pay you. I'll pay you the gold coins. Here. Let's, let's show her this guy our goodwill, apologize, you know, it's, it's... We just really had to get past him, you know, we're just, we're getting him the gold coin. Okay, it's been raised too, but that's fine, you know, whatever. Here's your gold coins, buddy. The troll says, I've changed my mind. I won't let you cross my bridge after all. The troll then picks up the bridge, causing you to fall into the chasm. Yes, he is understandably upset with us, and despite paying him properly, he does not let us through again. So, if you don't know about Humano, you may be stuck here. Now, why does Humana work here? It's constantly told us about a strong, cold wind. Now, it doesn't work. I do speak. Humana. Uh oh, the wind has suddenly died down. Nothing happens. There must be something missing. Yes. The troll has to be here. The spell was chanted. Humana. As soon as the magic is invoked, you lose sight of yourself. You're as invisible as the wind. Now, the idea is that you move forward, uh... I mean, I think it has to do with his shadow, like it's... The sh shadow and wind are the two major parts of the spell. So... Alright. Now, we went that way and got everything we needed, so let's go this way. You're in a small throne room. A skeleton wearing a gold crown sits in front of the on the throne in front of you. I'm actually going to let this go for now. I'm going to try my best to get all this done. Um, so... Although he looks dead enough, this royal skeleton sends a shivers down your spine. There seems to be something in his hand. Okay, this is, I'm just going to let this kill me, because it has spent... There's something in his hand, but I'm looking at his hand. His hands don't have anything. Come on. There we go. Alright, torch is back. Alright, so... There was a hint a long time ago about something that was fit for a king. The royal scepter. Let's give it back to the king. Oh, there's something else now. As soon as you give the scepter to the king, the seal and the pillar blowers. You can now see a ring-shaped hole. Well, that's convenient, because we did find a ring earlier. It's a ring set with a large black sapphire. Hold up, I'm gonna try this. Leave. Rain. No, wait a minute, Spess, you don't do that. Oh, but I wanted to put it... Okay, fine. So yeah, I have no idea what leave does. I'm gonna use the rain. Now, I thought it was a black sapphire, but apparently it wants to render it as a red ruby. Uh, the ring fits perfectly. The throne magically rises, revealing a secret passage. This hallway is made of large glaring slabs. Look! Torches! We need those, but first... Uh... It's a huge stone slab. Huh, why would you point out that one slab specifically? What's in here? It's very dark. Okay, let's go in there and see. And without thinking, you jump through the opening and immediately hear a loud click. Suddenly, the granite slab above you gives way and crushes you beneath it. It breaks every bone in your body. Yeah. It's actually one of the reasons I didn't want to go ahead and pull all the torches, because they were going to be back anyway. So, now we can pull all the torches. A variable treasure trove of torches. And there's no way you can't check for traps or anything, it's just a dead end. A 
on the opposite wall are a pair of stone beasts guarding a dark archway. So, if I'm not mistaken, the stone statue is some three and a half feet tall and ugly as all heck. It's very, it's cold to the touch. Well, that's interesting, but we don't want to go there. Can we use the side passage? Yes, we can. Sulfurous fumes rise from the hot molten lava some 30 feet below you. Swimming would not be wise. Well, you know what? Shouting a battle cry, you catapult yourself off of the platform. You're brave, warrior, but stupid. Your body explodes as you plunge into the lava. I like how their body explodes, it's so awesome. Alright, so... We did get a hint for this as well. This huge statue is made of precious metals. It holds a basin of smoldering coals. We did receive a hint about this, and it is a spell. Motari... Rise it. The spell was chanted Motari. The statue lowers and a large platform rises out of lava. You now have a way across. Stalagmites surround this room like the cavernous jaws of huge beasts. The is a little bit slow in this room. It's a strong looking metal cylinder. You seem to be wasting your time. Okay, can I not look at these? It's a finely crafted wooden handle. There are three handles here, side by side. Okay. It looks like a large, very deep pit. Well, it's not nice with the handles yet. Let's go down here and see what's going on. Hello. You woke the sleeping guard from his beauty sleep. He decides to eat you for breakfast. That wasn't very nice of them. So, no self, don't wake up monsters beauty from their beauty sleep. Okay, so, the thing that you made, th this puzzle is stupid, but it's not... It's stupid for different reasons. So, if you're paying close attention, you may have noticed the stairs in the Sphinx's room. Three up. Two up, one down. Dub. One up, two down. And then alternating up, down, up. That is literally this puzzle right here. All three are up. You flip the bottom, the right one down. The right handle was lowered. The middle one down. The middle handle was lowered. And then pull the right handle back up. The right handle was raised. Now, I want to say that uh, the screen, the cylinder lifts with a shuddering sound. You're momentarily dazzled because the darkness is lit by a blinding flash. The silver orb is revealed. And notice how the, the levers uh, reset. They reset after three moves. So, the orb is in hand. As soon as you remove the orb, the cylinder closes. Let's get out of here before we get eaten. I think there's other... I want to say that at one point you were able to kill yourself by flipping the switches wrong, but you can brute force that puzzle. It's stupid and annoying and time-consuming, but you can brute force it. But the, the solution is in the, the uh, Sphinx's room. So. Well, we know these things are in the room for a reason, but let's just show it. Suddenly, the beasts begin to shudder, and their eyes begin to glow red. The gargoyles, angered at your presence, spring from their frozen state and rip you to pieces. There's not enough left of you to even feed the birds. That's getting violent. Also, those guys are technically foreshadowed by the game's cover which is a gargoyle uh, bursting free. Uh, it's, yeah, the very, very front, front cover of the game is uh, 
a stone statue with the tail uh, having the shards of uh, stone break off of it. Uh, very cool cover, honestly. I love the cover of uh, the game. Anyway, these are creatures of darkness. Anyone who knows the mythology of gargoyles knows they come to life in the night. So, light is their weakness. And if their weakness is light, then let us speak to them. Illumina. The spell was chanted, Illumina. Suddenly, the cavern is so bright, you have to shade your eyes. It takes you a few moments to regain your senses from the, the Nova Burst. It seems the gargoyles were also affected and haven't yet recovered from the spell. So yes, they were blinded entirely. They're very sensitive to light, so we can now pass them. The room seems to be made solely for the purpose of housing the well. Yes. The door is covered with dirt and dust. Can we open it? The door is locked. For folks, there's no opening this door. The door never opens. I don't know where the door would even go if it did open. There's a lot of questions I have on that. Maybe it goes to the door that was barricaded by the over by the waterfall. I have no idea. There's so many left and right and everything else that I couldn't tell you where this begins to go. Um, but I can tell you this. We have a little lever here. We look at this well. This fine well is made of a stern board. Uh, no, I want to look at the gear, please. There. Small handle attached to assortment of gears. And the lid, the wood planks act as a cover for the well. Okay, well, let's use a torch. We have five of them, so we have plenty. So, you can hit use lever, but you can also just say open well. The cover of the well is open. See, the, the lever goes down. Now, if you just enter the well, you die. Because, of course you do. I've already showed that this is the same death as jumping into the well in the, the courtyard. So, uh, where it says you don't see any water and you, you know, it's deep in your imagine you broke every bone in your body. Same exact death. So we won't go there. But we will look at this big coin. It's a large gold coin with a well engraved on it. So, if you try it in the other well, it doesn't do anything if I remember correctly. So, let us use the big coin in this well. As soon as you throw the coin into the well, a huge wind erupts from within it. It reminds you of the small dust devils you see in the autumn months. Well, I don't know how that's supposed to help, but I think the theory is... Uh, what do you mean you can't get in there? There we go. The swirling winds carry you down the deep well and set you gently into the cabin below. You stand above a beach, looking down upon the river. Hold everything, because I want to take a moment here. There is, in fact, you don't have to do this now, in fact, you can do this, wait till the very end to do this, but there's something I want to do. We have the staff. We have the orb. Aha, it's an orb made of silver. Its glowing surface causes your skin to tingle. And we have the blade. So I'm going to go back and recite scroll one. Five to find, three or one. One gives access to the bladed sun. The bladed sun is going to be that talisman. It looks like a sun and it's very sharp. The silver orb to vanish below, the staff of ages to vanquish the foe, joining to the golden blade. So the blade is the the thing that it looks really stupid. Honestly, I don't. There are things I have issues with in the uh, the models of this, but the golden blade is a part of this. So we're going to take that. No, we're going the wrong way. We're going to take the blade, and we're going to merge it to the staff. Suddenly, lightning begins to flash in the room. Then, the golden spike slides smoothly onto the staff and locks in place. 
and the orb. Oh, wait, I have to put the orb on the staff, sorry. Light cascades through the room as the staff becomes a living entity. Power emanates the staff. Three, the three are now and forever one. Ha! I never looked at the staff after merging it. That's cool. <clears throat> oh, what's this about it being a living entity, though? Anyway, the river's the, the river's water is dead calm. It wouldn't surprise you if this were the river sticks. It's a great gold gong. Beauty is enhanced by the intricate stand that supports it. The mallet is made from what appears to be centaur. How would you know? Okay, the, the look at the stand also looks bad. So this is one of the only times that you have to do this, because you can't just take your outfit. You. you can't take the mallet. Not look. You can't take. But you can use it. What do you want to use this on? This is dumb, though. Why wouldn't it let me take it? It should let me take it and then have me use it again. Or did they run out of inventory space? They may have run out of inventory space. After the gong sounds, a specter materializes right before your eyes. The ghostly ferryman doesn't look friendly. You hear a faint voice ask for a fairy. You know, you know, I've never tried to screw over death before. Or, well, this is supposed to be Sharon, not death, but... Does he take copper? The ferryman will not take the copper coin as a fair. Suddenly he disappears. Well, at least he didn't kill us. And he did come back, so that wasn't a, uh, a failure state. He knows his gold. Okay, so let's give him a gold coin. The ferryman takes the coin and gestures for you to board quickly. So yes, we hop on to move on to the raft. You climb aboard the tiny raft and soon reach the opposite bank. A stone skull stands against the far wall, screaming silently. For some reason, you get the feeling you're standing on sacred ground. Hot, dry air emanates from the hole. The jaw of the skull is made of polished stone. The shape of the sword is carved in the left pillar. The shape of crown is carved in the middle pillar. The shape of jewels carved in the right pillar. It's a polished stone slab with an odd shaped niche cut out of it. You might notice something here. These look like. That was an accident thing I used myself, and what an odd behavior for such a brave warrior. Won't go into that, but. What I'm looking for is I'm going the wrong way, of course. Of course, I'm always going the wrong way. The talisman, the bladed sun. This is the door that the key goes for. So one just to gain access. Now, the, the hint that I mentioned is that this, it must, where the sword is hung, he must place the key. So the key talisman goes in the sword pillar. But of course, we've been dying all this time. Let's put it in the wrong one. You have placed the bladed sun in the wrong hole. You did not heed the warnings, and now the warlock's lord's defenses end your life. It's not as fun as it could have been. But, that's, this is why I don't care for the fact that the book 
which is called the Prophecy, also teaches you Mozari Rises. Because Mazari Rises, or Matari, is it Matari or Matari Rises? Uh, because it teaches you to spell, it vanishes. But because it vanishes, you can't go back and look at the hint. It's kind of mean. But it's not impossible. If you're reading things carefully, it is very easy to understand. This is not moon logic. Yet. The artifact known as the Blade of the Sun is now secured and in place. What now? <laughs> so... The big question is, what do we do now? Let's use the staff. Because the, the staff is... nothing happened. Okay. The staff on the Blade of the Sun, nothing happened. So... One, remember, you have to remember the wizard's words. Not just the book, not the scroll, but the wizard. One is to be thy key, and one to be thy pathway. It's three for the staff, one for the key, one for the pathway. So we've placed the key, but we have not opened up the pathway. So that is the major hint there. We have to blow the platinum horn. The sound of the horn echoes loudly in your ears. Suddenly, you hear the sound of grinding rock. The jaw of the skull begins to descend. Hot wind erupts from the mouth, creating the illusion that the stone skull is alive. The cavern that you have entered is by far the largest your eyes have ever gazed upon. From the depths rises the most powerful creature that has ever existed, the Behemoth. Your stomach knots up as you stare at this new horror. The beast is indeed incredible. It's a giant pink Barney. How can how bad could it be? You wonder for a moment how you can defeat such a creature as this. The Royal Lord's staff glows in mysterious light. Your jaw drops and you stare in awed silence at the side of the great titan. Acid drips from his jaws and sills his ledge, ledge below. Oh, so he that's acidic spit he's got. We have a silver gauntlet, we'll be okay. Um, but no. It's... So if you try anything that's incorrect, this happens. And yes, we're actually going to... Uh, attempt to attack the staff with on the wizard as you would think you would need to do, but... The Warlock Lord feels your presence and knows that you are the seed that must be destroyed. Flame shoots forth from his staff and engulfs your body. You have failed. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Yeah. So attacking the Warlock Lord is actually the wrong move to make. It's kind of interesting because you would think, oh, I'll attack the Warlock Lord and, and stop him from fully summoning the Titan, the Behemoth. But no, because the Warlock Lord expects you to do that. He senses your attack and his, using his magic defeats you first. But... He would never suspect you to be able to do a thing to the Titan. After all, this thing is, you know, like, the most powerful being in the world. You pray as you raise the Staff of Ages that it has the power the prophets claimed. The Staff pulsates with the power, and a beam of light explodes from it, striking the beam. So, we didn't destroy the Behemoth. But...
I saw the Warlock Lord through that brazier. That's funny. The creature screams in agony, thrashing back and forth in great pain. In his rage, he grabs the Warlock Lord and descends into the depths forever. You can hear the Warlock Lord's screams fade into silence. Suddenly, it's very quiet. Beautiful light seems to fill the cabin. The morning sun, you say to yourself, it is over. Although exhausted, you lean on the staff of ages and begin your long journey. Word of your historic quest has already reached the farthest parts of the land. You are triumphantly greeted as you enter the gates of the royal city of Stormhaven. Moments later, you are ushered into the royal palace, where you are greeted by the king. Question. Game. Question. How is there a king if... Mr. Jer here is the last of the line of kings. Are you a false king? I mean, I suppose the kingdom has to have a ruler, even if he's not by blood. And... I don't know, it just... It's... You kind of stumbled over yourself at the end here. I know what thou hast done, brave one. The world would be dark forever without me. It's not frozen. It's got more. There we go. You are bestowed a kingdom to rule in the king's fair daughter's hand. As you leave the throne room, you know that although this quest is over, others await. After all, the bards will need new legends to sing of and new tales to tell. The first stories end. Yes. This game did have sequels. Uh, I never, sadly, played any of the ones until the Shadowgate 64, which is a train wreck. Um, it's not as bad of a 64 version as, say, Castlevania did, because that's a game that people would like to forget, Castlevania 64. Um, but it is still... How do I describe it? In trying to go full 3D, they ended up losing the essence of what made Shadowgate good. Uh, because, let's, let's face it, the game is rough around the edges. It's got a bit of moon logic and a couple of its puzzles, but there's very subtle hints in the wording that I do appreciate. Yes, they could have been a little more clear, maybe throw in a couple of extra hints, and maybe not put hints inside of one time you scrolls. But, but, overall, the game not, isn't necessarily impossible to figure out. Just, you're not gonna, a kid wouldn't figure it out very easily until, unless they slowed down and, and played it properly. And that's kind of the way this game was designed. You had to slow down. You had to play it carefully. You had to, of course, you know, granted, but even doing that, I was still running out of torches, so God knows how many torches you can go through. And you would start over the game, and, and it's like, okay, I can rush through the first part of the game, and I can rush through that part of the game. And eventually, you would work out the entire game. Um, it's not as bad as a lot of people make it sound, at least not to me. Now again, I grew up with the game, and I understood how evil some of its puzzles were, and some of the solutions of the dumber puzzles are st have stuck with me. Like, I couldn't forget them if I wanted to. So, oh, by the way, this screen is frozen solid. As you notice, the flames have stopped from flickering. They, it's not going anywhere. Now, I am going to play this one more time. Because I want to do not really a speedrun, because God knows I can't speedrun games. But I want to show you what it's like to quickly play through the game, knowing where everything is, knowing the order you need to do everything in. I'm not going to do it perfectly, I'm probably going to miss a few things, but we got one more episode of Shadowgate just to show if you do know what you're doing and you're not trying to show off the game's death scenes, how fast can this game be played? Because it's a bit ridiculous. Because there's no RNG in this game, unlike Tunes and Treasures, it 
is ridiculously fast, if you know what you're doing. And until then, we hope to see you again. Later. <laughs>